Good morning, everyone. Oh, I have been so lazy on my Bible reading videos. <laughs> it's what it is. <clears throat> I rarely do anything that I have to do and I don't want to do it. Okay. Somehow the timing's always right and things just fall into place. But there's something I wanted to share this morning first before I start reading. It seems like that one's own safety and the people around us is very important. And we try to ensure that in certain ways. And I'm, I have to say, yeah, I'd probably do things a little different, but then too, the way my life, my path in life went and where I ended up living, this and that, right? Okay, I made certain choices for myself, for my family. There is one thing that I notice, or it, it's come across, beware the people that you are around. Okay, beware. Notice, notice who the people are around you. I've come across, sadly enough, a lot of people where certain choices that they've made could have, has, will in the future, if they don't change, endangered other people's lives, nothing to do with their decision that they made for themselves. For example, drinking and driving. For example. Or I just came across another one, very disturbing story, uh, that uh, was uh, not over the internet or anything, where someone got uh, over a situation, uh, depressed to the point of wanting to take one's life, uh, knew where a gun was, and uh, then wait it uh, for the other person to show up. Okay, all right, what am I saying here? And then a, a scuffle happened and a shot went off and, and nobody got hurt. Oh, thank God, nobody got hurt, right? Oh, everything's fine then, right? Yes, but it went through, it was an apartment building. I went through the apartment they were in and into another person's apartment and the person happened to be there, but thankfully not where huh? the shot went through. Oh, well, there, right? Yes. Oh. Uh, I'm not sure if people get this. When the story was related to me, it was, of course, all about the person, you know, who was down in the dumps and this and that. And I don't know what, again, through a decision that were made beforehand, one had to say, okay. <laughs> And, uh, but again, uh, to me, this is again, a situation of how utterly selfish people are out there. They're, they're if a situation doesn't work out to this, that, then it has to be made known in a way that then almost a, a temper tantrums ensue and, and without any kind of regard for the people that live around them and could be affected in a really negative way and even life could be taken life that has nothing to do with their own conflicts right i find that it's this is a common kind of thing and uh for many people in many different ways right yes guys remember the toilet paper rush yeah what was that what was that and uh if it happens again yeah, that supposedly toilet we never had a problem we didn't stock up we always it was interesting we went to we always had enough interesting oh, and of course you know i was prepared well we got plenty of plants around here we could easily right and then well there's are other ways to you know, clean yourself up. Right? Yes, it's not like you're pooping all day long or something. 
Well, anyway. <laughs> and so uh, I remember we went to uh, Walmart during those times one time. And we did need some. Not much. We just needed some. And, of course, the shelves were empty except for all the way in the back. And I, I, there was some of the really expensive stuff, okay? All the way in the back, there was a, what was it, the last six or eight pack or something. And I said to my sister, I said, look, it's waiting for us. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so we got one. Nobody fought us for it or anything like that. <clears throat> It happened with other things the same way, you know, where some things were just, okay, it's not there, you know. Then I look and I move things. Oh, look, there's one more, right? Yeah, <laughs> happened with yeast because I like to bake. Uh, so, anywho. Uh, and uh, no doubt if, uh, well, if somebody would have come up to me and said, oh, I really needed that, I would have given it to them. I'm not like that. I'm just not. I'm going, well, okay, I guess I... And by the way, I, I've learned from a nephew of mine. I learned how to make my own yeast. Uh, yeast can be made with uh, sugar and water and I think a little milk. And you put it outside, open, and, uh, and the yeast, it, it's actually part of the air, right? collects in the jar and you can make your own yeast <laughs> pretty amazing isn't it yeah anywho so i had to tell the person who told me the story who's very close to that other person who now just again the mindset of that person first of all the cops did show up and they just thought everything was, well, no, it was just a you know well, <laughs> well it, this isn't just a you know and uh, oh, we're all surprised when the one went to jail, you know, not for long, and then uh, uh, now awaiting trial, but thinking, I guess it's a felony. This was a felony, okay? And they're like, well, that could, that could, uh, everything will be just fine. I'm going, man, you, you just don't know, do you? You don't know the law. You have no idea what's going to come towards you, having done that. And... Instead of the person reflecting and repenting over what happened, huh, they want to try to find excuses and even get upset over, well, nothing happened. Right? Yes? Okay. Hmm. It's an interesting one. And that's on how people huh, are acting out there. So I had to give the advice to the person, be careful when you're around that person. I probably would say, I'll meet you somewhere outside in a cafe from now on or a restaurant to have, or at the dog park to have some give and take with you, but you're not coming back to my house because I have children at my house. And you can't be around people like that. You can't have people like that around your children. Because if they're that careless huh, with people's lives, you think they're going to care about your children or even you. Huh? Oh, but that is, no, that's how you teach people. If that person realizes that with her behavior, huh, uh, that she's losing all her friends. Or her friends are, okay, well, unless I see a change in you and you really repent for what you did and acknowledge the consequences huh? and restore that, then that's one thing. But huh? if on top of that, then there seems to be no repentance going on over it. Huh? This, that selfish type of way of thinking. It's all about me. It's all about me and my feelings. It's all about me and what I want. Huh? Not, not what I need, what I want then uh, you have to distance yourself from people like that. That's how you keep yourself safe and your family safe and your surroundings safe. And uh, if that happens to people where suddenly they realize, oh, well, well, yeah, first they're going to be upset. Oh, so you don't want to be my friend anymore. Da, 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 da. It's, not, no, it's not that. 
I'm going to have to see first improvement. I'm happy and willing to help you with that improvement, but not in my environment where you could endanger everyone around me, myself, me. And, uh, and that's not going to happen. And then maybe people will start to realize the ones that are doing all these things, how selfish to go into a store and just steal whatever, because there are laws out there now that will not convict you. How selfish is that? And again, how dangerous is that for the people that go into the store with people like that around? Yeah, we have, what, what, how long is it going to take until knives and guns and I don't know will be applied huh, so that greater quantities can be huh, removed from a store uninterrupted? Mm -hmm. What if a child suddenly gets in between there? Huh? Yes, and accident accidentally, selfishly gets killed, hurt by one of these people. So, again, what did I say? How do you protect your environment? Be aware who you've got around you. Watch their behavior. And when there are certain things that you have to say, yeah, something bad could happen here because of that selfish, selfish thinking, selfish behavior of that person, then you eliminate them out of your life. Not completely. That's it. It says, you know, no, I'm not coming to your house because nobody who knows what's going to happen there someday. But I'll meet you, you know, in an open space somewhere. Because people like that, they'll still behave more or less properly in an open space. Okay, except for, right? What did I mention about the thieving? What about the riots and all that? Who does that? Who does that? Then somehow we have to protect ourselves against people like that. Well, again... If we as good people aren't around them, well, as selfless people huh, who take care of our families, our children, and our friends, huh, and our surroundings properly, then we need to remove ourselves. Either they have to be removed and just say, yeah, I can't be friends with you anymore for right now, until you figure out yeah, what you did wrong. And not keep making excuses or use me as your crutch. Yeah, that then all I'm doing is enabling you to keep, yeah, keep it up. Right? That selfish behavior. So it starts in our children too. If you have a bully as a kid, most likely you were one. Yeah. And uh, that's right there. It starts right there. Yeah. Bullies. Why would why are children bullies? Why do children hurt other children like that? Huh? Saying mean things about how they're dressed or what their background is or this or that. Huh? Yes? Yeah. It's, uh, and on how adults can be bullies to other adults in certain ways, making you feel bad when you say, you can't come around here anymore. Well, what, why is that? You know, well, because your behavior isn't... You, know, you need to learn to be a little more selfless and not so selfish. And, uh, you know, when, when it is safe to be around you, when you have learned that lesson, then you're welcome again. Oh, but that is... No, it's not. What if everybody were to do that? That would be a lesson for the people out there behaving in such a loose way that then, yeah, you never know, you live in an apartment building, you never know if you're going to get shot from another apartment building because a shot goes loose on a gun. Huh? Yes? <coughs> Just saying. So, we don't have to apply violence yeah, to let people like that know. No, you can't do that. That's not right. You stick. You stand by keeping your environment as safe as you can by not allowing people like that to be around hmm? and teach them that lesson of, yeah, but then they could, but it, well, that's not my problem. That is their problem. Hmm? Number one, the place that I need to protect is my place. Hmm? The person I protect is me and my children and my grandchildren, and the people around me that are also selfless. 
Oh, but that's selfish. That's not selfish. No. That is in a peaceful way, in many ways, just having a talk with a person. And uh, no, I, I definitely gave the advice to the other one no, that has children. This, that's, you can't have that person in your house anymore. You're asking for it then, because now you know. I said, it doesn't mean that you can't, as I said, you got the cell phone stuff going, right? Yes, you can safely have a conversation without having to worry, right? And maybe uh, that friend, that good friend can teach that very selfish friend as something uh, by having some conversations. But as far as also making it clear to the other person, you can't come around no, physically anymore. That's one way to do it peacefully, yet still be there. No, yes, well, just saying. Anywho. So, we are on... Fifty. We are on 50 in Genesis. Let's see what it has to give us. Jacob's funeral. At this, Joseph threw himself on his father's face, covering it with tears and kisses. Then Joseph ordered the doctors, oh, they had doctors, in his service to embalm his father. Oh, they're still in Egypt. That's right, that's right. The doctors embalmed Israel, and it took them 40 days for embalming takes 40 days to complete. 40 days? Well, tell you what, Jacob's got to be around somewhere, just like them Egyptian pharaohs. I wonder, did they find him? Oh, found out about the why the Egyptians were afraid of shepherds. Okay, they weren't afraid of shepherds. They, they, they didn't eat much meat, okay? So... Okay, so the wonders that were the vegetarians. No, they weren't. It's just there wasn't as much meat as other things that crops and stuff that they had. So, I mean, again, I, I can't quite, I didn't quite get it. I mean, it explained it. So because they abhorred other people to eat meat. And I'm going, huh? Yet they ate meat too, Okay. But because there wasn't that much, right? so, oh, what about the pigs? Supposedly, they're not eating pigs. doesn't come from the, the Jews. It comes out of the Israelites. It actually comes from the Egyptians. And the reason, again, is not because they're on clean animals or something. It's, it's more because there were so few, right? They did, pigs weren't a big thing there. And uh, so there were so few. Okay, well, if you got a couple, if you got a sow and a boar, uh, then, uh, you know, then, then you could have a lot of pigs in a very short amount of time. Okay, I'm not sure what, right? but supposedly the Egyptians didn't really eat pigs. They had them for very, very special occasions. Well, there you go. So it, it's kind of, it's all, the reasons for it, this is a little bit all over the place, you know, so... Also, there wasn't a whole lot of grazing land there, so that's that's one thing that it didn't favor, right? Uh, uh, big herds of uh, uh, sheep and goats and cows and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, you know, so so if you've been around animals, uh, if if you're the people that depends on crops, okay. And I'm assuming they weren't fenced in. Right? They were just there. And you maybe had some people watching right? over the crops. This and that. Then uh, you, you don't want a whole bunch of goats. Can, man, they can destroy a whole field of... I mean, we're talking destroy. Okay. Well, anyway. So, and, uh, uh, and sheep, yeah, they could, as, as I said... Yeah, you got a big enough herd, they can trample down a, a field of, of grain, uh, uh, millet, or whatever, in a very, very short amount of time. So, and to, to control them, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if once they have started that, 
So I could see where that's one reason. No, 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 no. Don't bring these, don't bring them, these shepherds around our fields, okay? Because of what could happen. So was it the fear or a poor? I could see this. Man, ugh. So pigs, oh my gosh, pigs can. If they would, if they get into your garden, you can kiss your garden goodbye. <laughs> so I could see that the reasoning for, man, we don't want them around here. Put them somewhere where we don't have to worry about what we're growing, okay? Especially at a time where there is already very little. So, right? Is it? Right? Yeah. Anyway, so again, it's, it's almost like then that other part, the passage, make a big old... Uh, elephant out of a mouse when it comes down to it like you know oh no, they're afraid of the egyptians are afraid of the shepherds no they probably were a little leery and irritated over them being there because right? yes all right anywho makes more sense to me having you know, always had gardens and animals around and knowing if if you got someone again there we go if you got someone around you who doesn't care to close the gate and is aware of that and all this, and... <sighs> it's annoying. <laughs> Within a short amount of time, they can, and a, a goat, can, I remember one year, had seven avocado trees, and they were in their third, some of them in their fourth year, third year, and it takes about seven years, right? to get avocados and it was you know oh my gosh here we go and i came home and someone had left the gate open that had visited nobody's home left left the gate open and uh i had the goats destroyed every one of my trees that was a very sad thing yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah one could say <laughs> from then on i feared visitors <laughs> Well, anywho, it's what happens. <clears throat> okay. The Egyptians mourned him for 70 days. When the Egyptians mourned him for 70 days. It's amazing how these Egyptians were all involved with, with Joseph's people too. When the period of mourning for him was over, Joseph said to Pharaoh's, Ooh. That's the last book of Genesis, you guys. Household. If you have any affection for me, see that this message reaches Pharaoh's ears. Wait, wait a second. Oh. Oh, he didn't talk to Pharaoh. He talked to Pharaoh, probably that one manager. My father put me under oath, saying I am about to die in the tomb which I dug for myself in Canaan. That is where you are to bury me. So may I have leave to go up and bury my father and then come back. Pharaoh replied, go up and bury your father as he made you swear to do. Joseph went up to bury his father and went with him went all Pharaoh's officials. Oh. The dignitaries of his palace and all the dignitaries of Egypt, as well as Joseph's family, his brothers and his father's family. The only people they left behind in Goshen were those unfit to travel and their flocks and cattle. Chariots and horsemen went up with him too. It was a very large retinue. Wow. On arriving at Goran Ha Atad, which is across the Jordan, they there held a long and solemn lamentation, and Joseph observed seven days mourning for his father. Wow, by now he's been dead for what, three months? Oh, they sure take a long time to bury someone. When the Canaanites, the local inhabitants, witnessed the mourning at Goran Ha Atad, they said, this is a solemn act of mourning by the Egyptians, which is why they, the place was given the name Abel Mizraim. It is across the Jordan. Oh. His sons did what he had ordered them to do for him. 
his sons carried him to Canaan and buried him in the cave in the field at Machpelah, Machpelah, facing Mamre, which Abram had bought from Ephron the Hittite as a burial site of his own. Oh, so that's kind of become the family graveyard. Then Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all those who had come up with him to bury his father. So they went and they, let, and they went back. Hmm. From the death of Jos Jacob to the death of Joseph. Seeing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph intends to treat <laughs> Bring something else to mind. Intends to treat us as enemies and pay us back for all the wrong we did we did him. You know, people are only worried about things like that, right? When okay. Here's Joseph. Joseph has been so selfless about anything and everything is done not just for his own people his own family but the whole country and then for another whole tribe right then he followed to the letter right what what his father wanted and had the pharaoh's consent and this not only that but the support of the pharaoh this because of the kind of person that he was right yes so and here oh Daddy dead. Oops. Yeah, maybe Joseph will turn now on them. What do you think? Do you know your friends well enough? Do you know your family members well enough? Do you know which ones will turn on you? Do you know which ones are true to you? Huh? Yes? Okay. And how do you treat the ones huh, that are good and fair to you? How do you? Huh? Yeah? Oh, okay. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he gave us this order. You are to say to Joseph, Now please forgive the crime and faults of your brothers and all the wrong they did you. So now please forgive the crime of the servants of your father's God. Joseph wept at the message they sent to him. Oh. Oh. Uh-huh. I wonder why he cried. And did they lie? Well, it doesn't matter, right? Again, huh? would you have even without the message? I don't know. I wasn't around Joseph, but from the story, it sounds like this was a really amazing dude. Then his brothers went to him themselves and throwing themselves at his feet said, Take us as your slaves. But Joseph replied, Do not be afraid. Is it for me to put myself in God's place the evil you plan to do me has by God's design been turned to good to bring about the pre present result the survival of a numerous people so there is no need to be afraid I shall provide for you and your descendants in this way he reassured them by speaking affectionately to them now oh, there you go and Joseph said, look, yeah, that was a bad thing you did, but God managed to make something good out of it, really good. Okay. And, of course, he could make something good out of it because of what? Because Joseph was such a good man, a selfless man, a righteous man. And he loved God. He knew, I don't want to put myself above God and judge you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> huh? Besides, I see now why this had to, or what good God made out of it. I like the way this is said here. Rather than, well, that had to happen because then, no, that did not have to happen. That still could have come about in a different way. Yet, our heavenly parent knows how to look at the situation, go, oh, mm -hmm, yeah, I'm going to have to, I've got to change a little bit what needs to happen here. Yes, doesn't mean necessarily that was the original past, though. God does not. Oh yeah, let's 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 have.
this sin be okay because I have to have this sin happen so then I can have this ha good happen. That's not how God works. Okay, guys? That's not. No. <laughs> so I like the way Joseph said this here. The evil you planned to do me has by God's design been turned to good. That's a great sentence right there. Very deep. Very, it's like a pond. Ponder. I wonder if ponder, pond, and ponder, ponder something. A pond. Uh, someone mentioned something about that today. All right, let's get, I'm going to get too long. <laughs> So Joseph stayed in Egypt with his father's family, and Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw the third generation of Ephraim's line, as also the children of Machir's son of Manasseh, who were born on Joseph's lap. At length, Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will be sure to remember you kindly and take you out of this country to the country which he promised an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph put Israel's sons on, on oath, saying, When God remembers you with kindness, be sure to take my bones away from here. Joseph died at the age of 110. He was embalmed and laid in a coffin in Egypt. Well, he should not have been too difficult to find then. Well, anyway, well, here it is. Wow. Oh. And then what? So what happened? So the, so the Egyptians were, right? so that's the end of, of uh, that's the end of the book of Genesis. We finished the book. Woo, woo, woo. By the way, on my birthday, it's my birthday today. We finished the book of Genesis on my birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Right. That's like, it's a, it's kind of a milestone, don't you think? Yes. Yeah. Just like every year that I live, from one birthday to the next is a milestone. Oh, beautiful. And that there, you see? Where's my present from heaven coming? Yeah, but that's just, you see, that's because you don't understand <laughs> how the love of God works. So, the book of Exodus is next. Now, again... So we all know what happens next. So Joseph has passed away now, right? Yes. And I guess the uh, the hundreds of years of uh, slavery for the uh, for Israel, right? The people of Israel are is starting now. Right? Why are they not called the people of Joseph? Well, because Israel's Israel. Okay, whatever. But it's interesting. So after Joseph's death, I wonder what happened. Huh? Yes. I don't think it'll tell us. But again, because of the, that, that would explain why the, uh, the people of Israel, the Israelites, ended up for so long in Egypt. So it, there is some continuation of the story, I guess, through the books. We'll find out more about that. And, and, uh, and some about some misconceptions, like with the, uh, the Egyptians, were they really afraid of the shepherds? No, no, mm -mm. it most likely was. Ah, we don't need these herds of animals amongst us, right, because of the way they grew food. They ate very little meat. They ate more grains and vegetables and stuff like that. <clears throat> no, it's, no. Everyone, it's their own. It's own. And uh, since uh, the uh, Israelites were the ones that came, that Joseph brought there, then, of course, the guests should do it. Should do what? Oh, wait. But, of course, as the host, the guests are what? But as a guest, you should be what to the host? <laughs> you see the give and take? But if either one knows their place, it's going to be peaceful and harmonious. 
the only time that doesn't work out is when you suddenly have selfish people around you yeah, who think that you're the one only who has to abide by the rules and they get to do whatever, yeah, regardless. Yeah. You see? Yeah? Okay. Well, people like that can be taught, like uh, I do here. I cook, and if I have people that come here don't eat meat, it's like, huh, okay, that's too bad for you. <laughs> I guess you eat what there is that you can eat on the table, but I'm not changing my menus around for you anymore. Because, as I said, okay, the lesson here is, if I come to your house and I want to eat meat, where is it? Aha, uh -huh. okay. That's just teaching. That's not forcing anyone, this or that one. I'd like to have, I'm going to give you the same treatment as you give me, right? plus the lesson that needs to go with it. Have bent over backwards before to make sure that yeah, that uh, people have certain preferences for food, this or that, or that. Yeah, I can't do that. That's no big deal. But then suddenly I had people here in the house who were trying to tell me, and I'm going, looking at them going, whoa, wait a minute. You just really, really badly overstepped a line here of respect. Okay. Respect and acknowledging too on how I have served you. Now, on top of that, you want to judge and persecute me? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Not in my house. Right? Yes? Uh, I'll give you one more example of that. I did have one of my children. Now, she wasn't disrespectful or anything, but her hair started to thin out. And I could tell otherwise, too. Yeah, something ain't. And I told her, I said, you're too tall. You're too tall. And you have a strong uh, skeletal system this that it's it's big and it needs meat and i said look at your beautiful hair you're not that old i said you look at your beautiful hair it's really thinning out and she oh mom i didn't even notice that before and then she started eating meat again i said you don't have to eat just any meat i said be, be buy a little be conservative about it where you're getting it if that's what is important to you okay so Mama had to give huh? one of her children a little bit of a science lesson, number one, you know, and then on how huh? rather than suddenly just be against something that doesn't make any sense and then huh? kind of letting others know on how they do it. Okay, she, she did not really do that, but I could tell that her health wasn't so good anymore. And uh, had to, huh? and then, you know, where she can be still comfortable on doing uh, and on, on the way she wants to eat meat and, and support her in that. Great, isn't it? Aha, uh -huh. right there, right? Yes? Uh, anywho. All righty. Well, there we go. That was my uh, Bible reading this morning. I haven't done one in a while, and I feel like this one just went absolutely super and great. Ooh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit World. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you. And I will talk to you another time.